All right. Yay. Welcome. My name <laughs> is... <laughs> <laughs> too many yays okay wait <laughs> starting over thank you to the post-production editing team we appreciate so you so much my humble apologies oh, so many yays <laughs> <laughs> okay. well now i'm not now i'm not now i'm not gonna say yay <laughs> Yay! Welcome! <laughs> My name is Katie Kay. I am a stand-up comic and a production member at Broken Drift, and I am joined by four very awesome industry members, and we are live at the Sacktown Comedy Get Down Festival, celebrating the 41st anniversary of Laughs Unlimited. So, heck yeah, snaps and claps for that. I am joined by Jennifer Canfield, the owner of Laughs Unlimited. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Yay, and I'm so happy it's your anniversary. Congrats. Thank you. Are you feeling great? I'm feeling awesome. Yeah. Yay. We also have Casey Courier here as well. I mean, you have tons of experience in the industry for decades, but right now you are opening Mike Drop Comedy Club and you are also a founding member of Broken Drift. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> now I'm so conscious of the yays. Jack <laughs> Jr., yay, you're here too. Yeah. Uh, you are the owner of the Haha, ha and you run NoHo Comedy Festival, and you're a headlining comic. So all of the things, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And we also have Randy Lubis, owner of JR's Comedy Club, and you run the Ventura Comedy Fest. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Also, I'm a also stand-up comedian. Comedian and legendary and uh, been doing that yes everyone here is basically a swiss army knife human you do it all and i'm so excited to ask you some questions so we can kind of get into it um jenny i'm gonna start with you because this is your festival what are you most excited for i know you've been waiting over a year for this to happen uh yeah we have we tried to do it last year 40 for 40 and COVID's a bummer, but I'm glad that I, I think I'm just ha most happy about it actually happening and it's yeah. here and we're actually getting to do it and it didn't get shut down or canceled or postponed or anything. So I'm just happy to be doing it. Yeah, yeah me too. And Jack, we have, so we have 30 comedians on the festival. We have some panels happening, um, workshops, joke writing. What's something that you love to go to as an industry member? I just like meeting the, the talent, like, you know, on and off the stage, just talking to them, see the, hearing their story and like what their goals are and how, and see, finding out who's taking this seriously and who's just doing this to, you know, just to be, how make some friends, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Randy, what's something about a comedy festival that makes you really want to go to it as an industry member that sets it apart? Well, all kind of great things happen, and unexpectedly many times. Uh, I can give an example of, of the, the early years. I produced the Ventura Comedy Festival for nine years, and early on, uh, somebody submitted a video to me, and it was so struck out in my mind that for the first time in my life, I decided... I wanted to manage a comedian. And I started managing this lovely comedian, Olivia Harewood, and I banged on doors for seven years and, and finally got her hired as a staff writer on The Late Late Show, and her career's taken off, and she's doing fantastic, and she, uh, she and her husband just bought a house, and ah. day before yesterday, she had a baby. Wow. So, what? So the, it, and it was just, uh, it transformed my life, her life, everything. But other cool things happened. Uh, James B. Conley did one of my festivals, and uh, Sirius XM produced his record as a result of them meeting him at my festival. So things wow. like that happened on a regular basis. So cool kind of things between new people happen and relationships happen, and you don't know how or where, but it's all part of the synergy of having a group of people together for one event. So it could be really good, big things happening. Absolutely. And you can't, you don't even know till later when you look back and connect the dots of, oh, well, it all started from meeting them at this festival. And that could be any of the comedians here too, if you meet someone awesome here. That's right. Casey, do you have anything like that where you've met someone that really kind of, you changed the course of their career from meeting at a festival? Not specifically a festival, but uh, clubs. Um, a great example, a kid named Luis Alvarez, who's uh, fairly new on the scene. He's touring with some big comedians, but he started as a secure, uh, sorry, a dishwasher at Stand Up Live. Yeah, I know. A, a, good. a great guy, a, a really good employee, and, and started his first open mic at the club, and from there has gone on in the past five years to you know, tour with big headliners and wow. really uh, make a splash. 
uh, but just the meeting the people and, and meeting the industry and the talent and yeah, and the I actually had a picture with him when he was a dishwasher. I was opening it for Damon Wayne's Jr. and he posted recently. He was he came out to take a picture with us, and now he's performing. Now, now he's opening up for me. He opened up for me at House of Comedy recently. No uh, former experience before he started Nothing. working with the club. Just fell in love with the environment, what? being there, and um, really likable guy. He's super cool, likable. From a dishwasher to now, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And you have a similar story, though. You started as a door guy, right? A door Casey? guy in two thousand and five at the Tempe Improv, and. Um, uh, no idea how I got the job or why I got it and just fell in love with it immediately. My dad was a school teacher for a long time in Lawrence, Massachusetts and told me if you like what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I found a job as a door guy and said if I could do this for the rest of my life, this is what I'll do. I love that. Ooh, I want some origin stories. Jenny, can I get your little origin story of how you, I mean, now you own a club and you run this festival. So how did you get here? Um, I was the bookkeeper at Labs Unlimited. <laughs> this makes me so happy. I'm inspired. I was the super quiet, shy, didn't talk to anybody, didn't talk to strangers, barely knew anybody. Bookkeeper, I was there during the day. I wasn't even there at night. And then the owner, previous owner, um, about let's, 12 years ago, August 1st, he said, Jenny, why don't you buy the club? And I was like, that's hilarious. I would never. And then a friend of mine was like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? You know the business. You know the hard part. I was like, oh, well, I guess. So yeah. here we are 12 years later. Here we are. <laughs> Jack, a uh. little origin story. <laughs> I, I was forced. <laughs> My parents owned a, a Mexican restaurant and uh, which they did karaoke and like events there. And then one day, uh, Buddy Lewis and Kim Wintley walked in and they go, oh, you guys do comedy here? Because they saw a light stage and the microphone. And my dad goes, yeah, comedy. <laughs> 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 so it became a comedy club on one night and then two nights and then full-blown comedy club. Uh, we still serve the Mexican food. Uh, how many years ago is that, Jack? This is f since I was like, I was, this was like 33 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, uh, yeah, then I, I grew up in it and became a comic and now I need therapy. And yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a pretty widespread opinion that you've made a great name on your own without that. So oh, thank you for that. Everyone Appreciate knows Jack Jr. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Randy, origin story? Well, I, uh, I started doing stand up in, in college, actually. And at that time, there were a handful of comedy clubs. Um, I had never been to a comedy club when I started. In fact, the first place I performed um, after college was a strip club. Um, I was told that you, you could go into this place called Sunny Day Stage Door in Pittsburgh, and the, the owner claimed he was a member of Bill Haley's Comets, Bill Haley and the Comets, uh, and he played saxophone. He could play two saxophones at once, and he said, you can go up in between the strippers. <laughs> and I had, nothing, I, had, I had nothing to compare that to. So I, I had, that didn't strike me as being hard or unusual or <laughs> difficult. I just knew I was going to get a chance to do stand-up. And it was not a very high-class strip club either. It was not, yeah. you know, it, 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 <laughs> it, 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 it was a, kind of a dirty place. Yeah. Uh, but I did well. People laughed. They, 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 and there were a handful of people there. It was like these old guys that probably were there every day. And so uh, then they, they started a one night, a week, a one, once a week, every Tuesday near the University of Pittsburgh. I went there every, two, every Tuesday for two years, and they opened up the first comedy club in Pittsburgh in 1981 and hired me to be the house MC. So I quit my job, nice. became a full-time comedian then, uh, and then in 84 moved to L.A. to try to become a movie star and uh, got married and... Uh, my wife and I opened up a little comedy room in uh, 1998. Uh, that was the first one, like 24 years ago. We opened up a little weekend comedy club in a Marie Callender's. Yeah. And it, it, it was unbelievable. It was in Marie Callender's, and, and Dana Carvey performed there, Larry Miller performed there, Elaine Boozler, Emo Phillips, Sean Wayans. Um, unbelievable people loved the room. It was just a cool little 100-seat space. Everybody loved it. And um, and I was continuing to tour and do stand up, and and then uh, like 14 years ago, I, another partner and I bought a full time club in Ventura, and, and I ran that for 12 years. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I started managing uh, Olivia about nine years ago, eight years ago now, and 
life goes on. And that's the beauty of this business is it's ever changing. You just never know when, when something different is going to happen in your life, in your career, in your businesses. Right, right now we're working on, a, uh, on, on creating a new streaming platform, which is very, very exciting to me. So all kinds of new fun stuff always happens. And, yeah. and it's kind of like Casey said, that's part of the adventure and the excitement of, of knowing that what you're doing is always fun and and always new and interesting so it's yeah been, it's been a good ride and know? pivoting too when the world shuts down like jenny you know better than anyone <laughs> of pivoting at the club and just you know then doing virtual or doing outside and being willing to do that even when willing, willing to come up with a crazy idea and try to convince comics to no it'll be fine you just you're gonna wear headphones yeah you can <laughs> still hear the audience sort of <laughs> no you no. can't outside you can't hear nobody that's fine <laughs> but yeah you're in a va- you're in a vast vast universe you know what i kept wondering when i saw that you guys were doing that i kept wondering about how you could transfer the audience's headphones or did everybody get a, their own set nope nope it's so have you heard of, of silent disco yeah. Yeah. So it's the same. The headsets are the same. There's a transmitter. It's hooked up to our soundboard. The microphone goes through the transmitter, and then they get it through their headphones. They all have it on the same channel, yeah. and the comics wear the headphones just like as a monitor because otherwise you're screaming outside. But did, yeah. did, did, did they get sanitized? That's what I was wondering. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, sanit- that's the thing that I'm wondering. Oh. Who, who? Yes, wants I personally to- sanitize <laughs> them <and> everyone. every <laughs> single night. We sanitized them and bagged them in sandwich bags. So when we handed them to them, they were just fresh out the bag. But yeah, we sanitized them every night. I mean, because of COVID, that's what we had to do. Did, did anybody balk at it? Any of the customers? Mm-hmm. The customers were cool with it. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That I mean, they, a, couple, a few of them asked. You know, they were like, "Have these been sanitized?" And I took because I did it myself. <laughs> yeah. Like I can guarantee, every night I do it myself. Alcohol wipes. It's a great time. My hands are drier than shit. <laughs> <laughs> because we did it. We did a once a month parking lot show. At mm-hmm. the senior center and everybody was in their cars and uh, they weren't even allowed to get out of the car yeah so the performers could take the mask off and we and, and they handed everybody cowbells mm. so people had oh. to honk the horns and <laughs> rang their cowbells yeah and that was all you could hear uh-huh. and and every comic that i booked was terrified yeah absolutely terrified before they did it and then once they did it they said oh my god i feel like i'm alive again. yeah yeah, and yeah. that's how that's how it was. They were I've I've never seen comics more nervous than before doing the silent comedy show because they're like there's a lot of okay so but you can hear the audience. I was like sort of, but I, but what you really do is because they're, one, they're sitting outside. The comic takes one ear off like a one DJ, ear off. One ear off. so you can hear them. Mm-hmm. But you could also you're looking at them. You're outside. It's dark, and their their ear their headphones glow, so you can see their heads bobbing. You can and see laughing. them laughing. Yeah, rather. <laughs> than hear the laughter so it's just it's just a different thing but it was great people i mean we were sold out i mean and it wasn't huge because we were still social distance minimum capacity 25 percent, all that and you had the tents too for everybody. yeah the and pods. then yeah then it got cold so we added tents <laughs> and heaters it was a camp it was a camping comedy yeah. yeah, it was, but it was it was new and it was fun and it was, I mean, really the only thing to do. You How often did you do the shows? We were doing every weekend. Every, yeah. I asked to do an, an added show. We're like, let's do one more. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Go on. I was like, yeah. we only have permission to shut the street. I mean, because in order to do it, we did it in front of the club. We shut down an entire street, a block, <laughs> and moved all of our furniture out and in every night. I mean, my staff. Yeah. Kudos to them. They they got painted on the wall as an homage because they were really <sighs> why I couldn't have moved uh, seventy five chairs and thirty tables out every night. They did it. I helped out one night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and comments, I'm like, oh, because me and Jenny, did, we, yeah. Jenny and I wanted to go eat. I'm like, oh, hurry up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's just throwing tables <laughs> in. <laughs> I remember. I remember uh, the challenging part doing that show was. The it wasn't the headphones and it was the people behind you talking and screaming and in, in the but you could only hear them. I could only hear them. Yeah, and they, so that's so what I hear people like there's a fight going on in the corner and no one can hear oh that but me. Goodness. And I'm trying to do my jokes and I'm like shut. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's why I, I warned the comics too. I'm like you can take one ear off so yeah. you can hear the audience. Yeah, but if you then address <laughs> something else that you hear outside and you're like oh that baby's crying, they're gonna look at you crazy because yeah. they don't hear a baby crying. Yeah. 
Because with the headphones on, they can't hear it. Minimize the outside noise. The cars driving by and the yeah. alarms going off in the parking garage and the yeah. people talking and having conversations. I also remember the stage was so far out and then I got frustrated. I, got, I just got off the stage and I walked up closer because yeah. I wanted to see them. I wanted to see smiles, you know? Yeah. It worked out. It was fun. If there's anything last year gave us was pivot and adapt <laughs> and you did it really, really well. Yeah, you yeah. did. Thank you. And I'm doubling back uh, a little bit to what I'm excited about to be here. And honestly, I'm really excited to meet you, Jenny. <laughs> you never met? I've never met Jenny and I've heard about her so much. Oh my but, God. but what you're talking about was really groundbreaking. I mean, you were the only one to do it around the country mm -hmm. and it was really um, the only opportunity the comics had to get on stage. Yeah. And everybody was talking about it. It was a really big deal and uh, really incredible. When we first started doing it, a couple of comics were like, you're the only club open in, yeah. in California. The <laughs> you have in to. The you, have, you should yeah. be advertising that. I was like, no, no, no. Shh. Quiet. <laughs> yeah, we're being yeah, we're so alone. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> Prohibition Don't style, be too loud uh, about I it. I remember. Know? I remember my week was over, and the next week you open inside. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I did just for you, Jack. Yeah, I was no, like, we really could have opened your weekend, <laughs> but I was like, nah, Jack needs to be outside. Oh. His loud. <laughs> <So funny. laughs> and it was um, uh, Mikey Winfield performed, and he was the one when he's he was in the middle of performing, and he was like, wow, you guys can hear every word because I mean you're in their ears now, and so the nuances of speech and tone are they really get driven home in that format because they they hear everything, yeah. so the laughter is different in their yeah. pain. They're paying every bit of attention. The person next to them talking, you know, people cl drink clinking glasses or there's nothing. They are tuned in. Yeah. I really wanted true. to try to move it inside. But try it? Like that I tried. They weren't down. <laughs> 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 I was like, hey, we have these headphones and I want to, you know, if you really want to try it, it's no extra cost, blah, blah, whatever. I think like six people took the headphones. Nobody wore them. They were like, yeah. <laughs> That's did, so did, funny. Uh, did any of you do virtual shows? Yeah, those are awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did a bunch of... The, the best one probably was Chocolate Sundays because there's an actual DJ on there and the host, Ron G. It was, it was pretty much fun, but a lot of those virtual shows are depressing. Oh, right. I did right. I did one. Uh, it was a corporate event. Yeah. And it was for the, the supreme customers of this bank. And, you know, right before I was supposed to do uh, 25 minutes and then right before I was going to start, they said, you're good for 35, right? And I'm like, uh, yeah, and I'm, in, I'm in my house and I'm looking at the wall clock on the kitchen and I, and I told my wife to sit there and laugh. And <laughs> they couldn't see her. She's, she, 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 she's sitting right there, I'm and I'm looking track. at the clock. Like a laugh track. And it yeah. was. It, it, I felt like I was bombing so yeah. bad because I couldn't hear anything. I, I could see them, and and there was like 18 people there, and they're kind of smiling, but, but I hear nothing. So my timing is just uh, oh. because that's mm -hmm. what that's that's what people don't understand about stand-up comedy is the silent part is is critical. And so if you don't feel that silent part, you're like, you're, you're, you're just totally like awkward in your delivery and I'm just doing it and, and, and it's eating up material so fast. Yeah. And I'm looking at that clock and thinking, oh my God. So I, I got done with it thinking I'll never do this again. And, and it was funny because when I finished, I get a flurry of emails from these people. You were hilarious. You were so funny. You were go so good. <laughs> and it, it was not worth it. Even though it paid me money, it was, it was just no. not worth the torture. It was, yeah. I know yeah. people that did tons of them. Said, oh, we learned how to do it. We, we, yeah, we it, adapt. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right. I, broken I, broken I, drift. I just, <clears throat> the experience just wasn't you guys what did it was it, right? Yeah, did a Broken few. Drift produced a lot of them in, for corporate events. Mm -hmm. in, comics would equate every 15 minutes to like an hour so i imagine 35 minutes is an eternity yeah it's crazy uh, it's a, a very long set and we did drive-in shows in phoenix too and they said the same thing about drive-in shows where it seemed like forever you know, forever i mean 20 yeah. minutes was a headlining set a lot of comics goes is it, it, i think i ran out of time so your, your drive-in shows were the people in cars and the comedians were on a platform. Yeah, we did multiple yeah, drive-in shows. We did the same thing yeah. in, in the parking lot. Flashing but. lights and honking horns, and it was yeah. very odd and bizarre, but again, the same feeling that the comics had. It was really one of the only opportunities to perform in front of yeah. people. Yeah. Um, so they were grateful for it, but it was uh, 
definitely a, a pivot. It was attempting to get comfortable in the sure. silence and the uncomfort all year. And then it's almost like once we finally got used to it, yeah. now we're, yeah. we're back. But also in Arizona, you guys weren't even close for like, you guys were close for like a week, bro. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Right? We, like, is close forever, yeah. bro. Yes, sure. Okay, Felt I do like want to ask a couple more things because I want to get to know you a bit better. Uh, Casey and Jenny, I know you a little better, so I know you've both been accused of being intimidating industry <laughs> members. Jack, I don't, and, and Randy may have experienced this as well. You're both very nice humans, and I want to know a little bit about how you would like comics to approach you, or when is a good time? Because, because. <laughs> I think people, you know, get scared they don't do it. And then later you're like, wait, why didn't they talk to me? So what, what's something you would prefer to happen during festivals? Yeah, Casey, what's something I, you would prefer? <clears throat> I began working with my wife in comedy clubs about 15 years ago. And she has said, I mean, even back when I was serving and bartending, there's, you have to smile. People are, are nervous to approach <laughs> you. And I mean, I'm having the greatest day of my life always. So it's just my face. Uh, I would say, <laughs> approach me uh, just as you would normally. It's just my face. I, I have no other <laughs> I reason fix other face. than the way that I look. If you want me to smile all yes. the time, it's going to terrify you more. I know that I'm, <laughs> I can't, I know that I'm on camera like... now. I'm consciously trying to he smile. He has that face, though. He has that face. I do. Can I see the manager? Nah, yeah. You come out. <laughs> <laughs> has that happened it's to you? It's a blessing and a curse. No, I'm, I'm approachable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, has that happened to you at all? Uh, you, you know, it's funny. He's scary. When I first met, I was terrified. My, my, really? my, 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 my wife tells me that I need to smile more. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm quiet by nature. So I think that that, that, that could be why Jack thinks yeah, that. Yeah, when I first met, I'm like, why is he so angry? <laughs> well, I think, I think comics have that default setting where they yeah. automatically think they don't like me. They hate me. It's like, I don't know That's true. you. That's true. Stop assuming that. I don't no, know I you. In fact, I probably don't know your name. I don't care. Because you've never introduced <laughs> yourself to me. Because you're awkwardly looking from 10 <laughs> feet away. Right, but exactly. it, yeah, know, just the, like the funny thing is, is that, that I love comedians and I love the, the, the industry. I love, I love the art of stand-up comedy. And I love, I, nothing I love more than somebody telling a joke that makes me laugh out loud and think, oh, my God, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. So, uh, you know... I, you, you, the, th the thing of it is, is when you're running a club, when you're running a business, you have, you have many hats on. Your brain is, is in a thousand places. And, and it, as when you're the comedian, your brain is only in one place. It's me. I, I want love. I want hugs. I want happiness. I want, I want somebody to pet me. I want, I want you know, I, I'm like a puppy. I, I need, I like, need I don't want to provide any right? of those things. And, <laughs> and, and, and the thing of it is, is, is you, you know, I might be thinking that my cook didn't show up that day or that, you know, we had a pending lawsuit or, or some... Some employee. My health inspections do soon. Yeah, exactly, or a toilet just overflowed, and I'm the one that's going to have to unclog it. Mm -hmm. You know, all of that is going through your head, uh, and and you're distracted. So to you're, order not giving, you're not giving you're not giving 100 attention to what that comic <laughs> wants from you at that point. Mm -hmm. But uh, but don't mistake it. I mean, I love comics, and I love uh, I, I love what they do. Yeah. I would say just beware of your timing too. Yes, because if Read you are trying to talk to me. While I'm seating to a show, right. I'm probably not going to give you as much attention as you'd like because I'm really trying to get you to stop talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> like you're going to get one word answers because I'm obviously interacting with customers right now. But if you wanted to talk to me before the show, you should have got here an hour early. Yes. Right? When I'm not seating yet or wait until after the show. But then you're sad or I don't know, or in a rush to get home or whatever. Right. Or you don't want honest feedback about your set. So you don't want to talk to me after a show. That's yeah. why festivals like this are such a good oh, very opportunity yeah. to kind of, you know, rub shoulders or have that extra moment to chat when you're not running around. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I know that everyone has different preferences for being contacted. Like some people are like, you have to remind me once a week. Some people are like, please don't email me more than once a month or once every six months. Do you each have kind of a different preference on that? Jack, I'll start with you. I, uh, if you already one of my comics, they send me their avails on Mondays at 5 p.m. If you send me at 8 p.m., I'm, I'm already gone. I from right. five to six, I'm booking, and I'll book far out as far as like far out as I can. And uh, if you're not one of my comics, just uh, do open mic, send me a tape, a referral. 
That's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. That's way more organized than I expected you to be. Thank you. <laughs> I've called. I've grown. I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Look yes. at you being a grown up. I know. Randy. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I try to think of, of, of what impresses me. Like, I, I'll give you an example. Um, years ago, it was a really great comedian, Don Friesen, uh, wanted to work for me, and I'd never heard of him. So I said, I'll give you a middle spot. And, and he said, well, I'd rather come in and audition for you to headline. And I said, okay. And he came in and he auditioned with a killer head, uh, uh, you know, 10 minute spot or whatever it was. And I booked him immediately to headline. Uh, it, it's always best to somehow get in front of someone or come in with a reference of someone that, that is a close friend or a trusted ally. Mm -hmm. Those th two things work best. Um, and I, I say to people, go ahead and be persistent with me. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't mind. I'm, I'm busy. I may not be able to answer every email, every thing, but don't think that means I'll never book you. It just means I'm super, super busy. So be persistent. C keep coming at me. And I, I could show you my phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do. Okay. So, uh, and, 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 you know, it, it, think of it, think of a, uh, always, always think outside the box. What angle can you bring to me that's different that I've never heard anybody say before? How can you get my attention, especially if it means improving my business? How can how can you make things better for me uh, by coming to the club? So th those are the important things. And and I, this is something that I tell comics all the time. Always, whether it's an email, a text, or a phone call, put yourself on the other end of that call on the other end of that text and on the other end of that email and try to think where that comes in someone's day. And try to, it, it doesn't make sense to, to be texting someone at showtime at their club. They're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, that's not when they wanna talk to you about a booking. Yeah. So, so, so put yourself on the end of it and try to figure what, what would make sense if, if this was me wanting to book someone? When would I wanna be contacted? Mm -hmm. I should use, oh, go ahead. I just going to use common sense. Mm -hmm. I actually have a good story. Uh, recently, these three comics won't came from Chicago, right? And they're at an open mic every day. And I kept seeing them, right? I kept seeing them. And I could tell they wanted to talk to me, but I was always doing something. Like I was washing dishes. I'm moving chairs. I'm moving the sign, changing the marquee. And then one day, I was coming out of the club from Smart Final with a bunch of produce and things. They all came and helped me carry this stuff. Right. And I go, Wow. And then we had a conversation. I ended up getting on all spots. Yeah. And that's how it is. Like they were like they, they it was there was a perfect timing. That was they were they were helpful and that's how that, that impresses me. Like you're you're, you're helping me out. You know. Mm -hmm. help, I posted on Facebook. I said, "Help me so I can help you." Mm -hmm. And everyone's yeah. like, "What's wrong? Are you are you trying to kill yourself?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, "No, I'm not trying to kill myself." <laughs> I go, "That I was for groceries. That was for comics. <laughs> right. Just well, the and, not what can you do for me attitude. Yeah. 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 Well, and in your persistence, be sure to stay remain professional. Yeah. I just got a message the other day yeah. that was like, I'm trying to contact you. I don't know what your problem is. <gasps> well, well, the problem My now problem is, you. is no longer you. <laughs> you can go ahead and stop contacting guy. me. Hey, and I went ahead and made sure and responded to that one. And I said, don't worry about contacting me anymore. You got a response. The end. He said, well, can all be forgiven? No, it's, we're done. That's all. <laughs> I don't know We can talk about it. <laughs> Casey, I know you're already getting the door knocked down on you to get booked at mic drop. So what do you prefer? Um, I agree um, with Randy a lot. And back to when you're running the club, there's so much going on. It's very hard to respond and be timely. And uh, I prefer email and, and be persistent, but professional. And it's very hard to get back, uh, especially <laughs> now. We're, you know, we're opening mic drop. So, I mean, there's a lot of comics reaching out and we're doing our best to um, reply. But just remain patient and professional. Awesome. Okay. I have when just is that opening up, by the way? End of the year. End of the so year. Oh, perfect. Uh, New Year's Eve is what we're hoping for. Nice. Yay. Fingers crossed. Is Casey at Curie? That you what? <laughs> 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 yeah. And Can we just get everyone's email? emails? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> MikeJobComedy.com. <laughs> <laughs> MikeJobComedy at Gmail? Or what are we? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so you're all Swiss Army Knife humans and doing a million things, but what is something that you're really excited for coming up? Randy? Well, 
I, I briefly touched on it. We're in communication right now about building our own uh, streaming platform. Yes. And hopefully let's start with four channels. And we've got a horror movie channel, <coughs> a podcast channel, a Nashville channel, and, and a stand-up comedy channel. So that's all in the works. And we're, we're working on a developer from South Africa trying to get it finished. And we got a lot of people interested and some investors. So we're working on that uh, as well as... Um, you know, I just opened up a new little room in Simi Valley, which is which is doing fantastic. And um, you know, I I waiting for I did a dry bar special, which is coming out soon. So looking forward to that. So just you know, uh, on and on, always always fun, interesting things going on. That's so great. Um, do you want to say the social media handle that people can follow you at, or the room that you run at? Uh, JR's Comedy Club on Facebook and Instagram, uh, JR's in Valencia, JR's in Simi Valley, and Randy Lubis uh, on Facebook and, and um, my website, randylubis.com. Your festival. Yeah, the festival. And well, the festival. The, f- the festival's <laughs> on pause right now. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to try to move it to Santa Clarita. So hopefully I'll, I'll be moving the festival. But, uh, you know, lots of, lots of things going on. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So many things. Jack, how about yourself? Um, so right now, what's been going on is lately, uh, I've taken over the Ha Comedy Club like full time. Like my parents are, they're old, they're older. So I've been, I don't, I don't know about congratulations, but yeah, <laughs> 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 it's a lot. It's been, a, it's been very stressful, and it's, uh, but the club's been doing really well. Um, one thing that I am doing a lot more now is uh, time management, and like I just came back from, I spent a whole weekend just with my kids. I took them to, we went to Zion, we went to, like. Like I, I'm, I'm like really white right now. Like I'm just like tra- <laughs> like doing. I went to like three national parks: the Grand Canyon, Zion, and Bryce Canyon. And I, I went hiking, and I was just I, I'm I really enjoying that right now. But other than that, uh, we're on Dubai in two days. No, three days on Monday. I went to Dubai on Monday for a comedy festival. Whoa! So I'll be out there. Okay, work life balance. Here yeah, we are. Balance. <laughs> Love it. Uh, and where can people follow you that you prefer? At Jack JR Comic. At Jack Junior Comic or at Haha ha Comedy Club. Awesome. Yes. Casey. Or the whole comedy festival. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you had mentioned that we're opening Mike Jeff Comedy, which yes. is in San Diego, and, and I'm excited. I've been in Phoenix for about 20 years in the comedy scene, so I'm excited to immerse myself in a new scene and meet new uh, comics and, and just really dive into San Diego. Um, you can find us at Mike Drop Comedy San Diego on Instagram. Yes, please follow. <laughs> and Jenny, other than this awesome festival and anniversary, do we have other exciting things coming up? Um, I think the most exciting thing I have now is we just set up so that we can do like three camera shoots of the comic sets. What? No, but yeah, yeah. we're test driving that this weekend. Hope all goes well and I don't uh, ruin everything. So, <laughs> awesome. but yeah, so. Just more uh, exposure for comics, and I'm tired of looking at bad submission tapes, so I'm going to solve make the sure problem. I like that. that they get new <laughs> submission tapes, because, Lord. Noted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, my laughs goodness. com at laughsunlimited. Yep. Awesome. Are you going to provide the uh, copy of the video to the artists? For a small fee. Yes. Yeah. How much? Uh, <laughs> double for Jack Jr. <laughs> All right. No, that's great. I, I mean, it, it's it's a great benefit that you're going to be giving to the comics. It's worth something. So. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And they and I mean we've all watched submission so tapes bad. here. I would humbly say we it's have priceless. a video panel this uh, comedy festival where yes. we're going to actually be live watching submission tapes and talking Are about really? the do's and don'ts of submissions. Are we really? Are we really? <laughs> are we really? <laughs> Yes, yes, we really are. <laughs> All right, I can't wait. Well, mm-hmm. I really, really look forward to hearing that info as well. And thank you all so Did you so volunteer your much. video, Katie? Thank you so much. That's very nice oh, of you. I have a video. That Can I show sound a video? Like me. Oh, I have to show. <laughs> <laughs> I have a show. I have a video for Noho. There's a video I have to show. Can we do that? Is it a Is view? Is that right? We, 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 we need the comics. It's a video of a guy in his hotel no. room. <laughs> we need the comics. Oh. We don't do it. He's, in, a hotel, he's in his hotel room on his bed and he goes, Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I want to be a comedian, so give me the Noho Festival. Yeah. I have one I'm really like funny. That. I fucks with you. <laughs> like that. I have one like that, but it's, a, it's that. an older lady at a dining room table. Same thing. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. I got one in the car. Just in the car at the, what? To, we yeah. get. 
You wouldn't My believe. My jaw is on the floor. I was like, thank you, you for your money. The crazy <laughs> things that we get, honestly, seriously. It's like crowd for, work to the pillows. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Not, could that that would have been better. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is wild. Well, see, this is why that we need industry panels and we need these podcasts, because how else will you spread the word to stop doing that? Yes, 100%. exactly. Like we shouldn't have to say it, but here we are. Here we are. Well, and I really appreciate hopefully the right people hear the message. Yes. yes uh, if the you're message. hearing this and you have, in fact, sent in that tape, please stop. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for sitting down with me and chatting it up. This has been super priceless for us all. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Casey. Thank, Thank you. you, Jack Jr. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Great job. Thanks. Okay, broken bye. drift. Bye. You guys aren't broken. <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.